Welcome to Surgery Squad's Breast Cancer Awareness Course. I'm Dr. Susie, and I'll be providing you with vital and potentially life-saving information about breast cancer. For those with a weak stomach or have children in the room, I need to let you know that this information is a bit graphic and contains nudity. It may not be appropriate for work or school environments. Click the Continue button when ready. To better understand breast cancer, we'll first review the basics of cancer itself. The word cancer refers to a group of diseases that are the product of mutations in genes, specifically the genes that are responsible for regulating the growth of cells in the body. When the growth of cells becomes uncontrolled, a cancerous mass, or tumor, develops within the body, intruding and destroying adjacent tissues. While it is nearly impossible to confirm what caused a specific cancer in a person, scientists and researchers have been able to categorize the potential causes of cancer into two groups, environmental factors and hereditary genetic defects. Environmental factors make up approximately 90 to 95 percent of all cancer cases. These are things such as alcohol and tobacco use, obesity, poor dieting and exercise habits, and pollutants. Hereditary genetic defects make up a small percentage of cancers, between 5 and 10 percent, and include BRCA gene mutations, which greatly increases the lifetime risk for breast cancer in women and men. Breast cancer typically begins in the milk-producing glands of the breasts, and, if left untreated, the cancer can make its way into underarm lymph nodes. These lymph nodes provide the cancer with a pathway to other parts of the body. This is referred to as metastasis. While breast cancer may be a frightening topic to think about for most, it can be overcome. If you or someone you know has been diagnosed with breast cancer, keep in mind that there are more than 2.5 million breast cancer survivors in the United States, and scientists are working around the clock to develop new treatments and to find a cure. Before we move on, take a few minutes to review the various stages of breast cancer using the arrows below. There are a variety of breast cancer treatment options available. The treatment for each patient varies depending on their breast cancer stage, overall health, and willingness to try the treatment. Click on each treatment option to learn more. If surgery is the preferred method of treatment, a surgeon will typically go with one of three procedures to physically remove a tumor. These include a lumpectomy, where a small portion of the breast is removed in addition to the tumor, a quadrinectomy, in which a quarter of the breast tissue is also removed, and a mastectomy, in which most, if not all, of the breast is removed. Some of the underarm lymph nodes may also be removed if it is discovered that the cancer has spread. 
After a mastectomy, many patients elect to have a breast reconstruction surgery immediately afterward. During this procedure, the surgeon works to preserve the appearance of the breast using prosthetic material or tissue from other areas of the body. Radiation therapy is generally used to enhance the effectiveness of a lumpectomy, but is also used in combination with some mastectomies. It involves using a high-powered x-ray to destroy cancer cells that remain within the body after surgery. Systemic therapy is the use of medications to treat cancer cells and can be used in combination with each other to boost the overall effectiveness of the treatment. Chemotherapy, hormonal therapy, and immunotherapy are all types of systemic treatments. Holistic therapy is less of a treatment option and is primarily used as a method of reducing stress, improving mood, and enhancing a patient's quality of life while they go through conventional therapy. Examples of holistic therapy include acupuncture, aromatherapy, yoga, and guided imagery. It is recommended that patients discuss holistic therapy with their physician before attempting it. When it comes to protecting yourself against breast cancer, your first line of defense is a monthly breast self-exam. Statistically speaking, a breast self-exam doesn't have the potential to reduce the incidence or mortality rates of breast cancer, but it does allow women to become more aware of how their breasts naturally feel. This makes it more likely to notice an irregularity. While monthly self-breast exams can be effective in the discovery of surface abnormalities, your best defense against breast cancer is to get regular screenings. It's recommended you discuss the different types of screenings with your physician to help determine which is right for you. Click on each one to learn more. A mammogram is a low-energy x-ray of the breast, and it's currently the most effective screening option for detecting the early stages of breast cancer. Most doctors recommend that all women 40 and older have a mammogram every year. Those younger than 40 should discuss their personal and family health history to determine how often they should get mammograms. Most women have clinical breast exams done by their OBGYN when they have their pap test. It is recommended that women in their 20s and 30s have clinical breast exams performed every three years. Those 40 and older should have them done every year. And that's all I have for today. Thanks for taking the time to learn more about breast cancer. See what else you can discover here on SurgerySquad.com. Check out our other videos on SurgerySquad.com.